One of the tragedies in graduate school and in postdocs is choosing a project that's not right and then committing to it within a few weeks of starting and then it takes years to get out of it. Taking the time to think about the project before committing to it might seem like a waste of time, but actually every week that you spend thinking about a project can save months of anguish later. So in my lab, I um, usually define a period of search, searching for a project. The goal is to get at least two projects so you can compare them. Not to commit to any project. I mean, you can try out things, but there's a difference. There's kind of an internal decision to commit or not to commit to a project. So to keep things light when you try to experiment to see if things work. Definitely to talk to everyone in the group because a lot of good projects actually combine existing abilities in the group. And to give it time, uh, to resist the, the temptation to have, to, to have the certainty that I have a project. Because I think uh, it's an error to take the first project that comes to mind. And that choice is quite critical. The way that we develop scientific questions in my lab is very deliberate. I decided on this when I started my lab to make it easier for me as a PI to sort of know where in the process we were but it's also turned out to be really useful for trainees because they don't feel sort of dropped into the deep end of the pool, as it were. So they know that there's a structure by which they will land at an idea that we're both really happy with. What it involves is once you join the lab, you basically take two to three months to go and read and engage with the literature. And we have regular meetings with our PI in that time where we bring back ideas or bring back basically experimental directions and refine those ideas over in an iterative process. In the first month, your job as a trainee is to read a lot and talk to a lot of people, including me, and deliver at the end of that month three broad areas in which you are interested. At the beginning of that process, you're very, very broad. So you're basically constrained by the field that the lab works in. So in my case, something like gene regulation, which is an incredibly broad field. And different people take that first month differently, right? Some people, they just want to read. Some people want to start some little experiments to get familiar with the system, and um, they think sort of better with their hands. Some people get the question while they're engaged in scientific work. So it could be at the bench, pipetting or doing some something that has to do with the body kind of mechanically, uh, rhythmically. That's where the mind suddenly generates questions. Other people, it was offline, when you're at home, when you're in the shower. For me, it was in the car one time, just starting to drive, etc. So I'm, I'm really flexible about how you spend that time, but at the end of that month, you need to deliver three things that you're excited about. And we're gonna, we talk about those three things, and we decide on one. Then in the second month, the goal is to break that area down into specific experiments, as many as you can think of, or analyses, or modeling approaches, that will address that problem. And again, this is also very collaborative, like talk to people, learn about possible experiments. Are there experiments the lab isn't doing yet that we could be doing? And again, at the end of that month, we're going to take that big pile of possible ideas, the trainee and I, and we're going to filter it down into two to four aims that are really like the core pillars of your project. And then in the last month, you're going to write it up. Because the act of having to write it is a way of clarifying your thinking and forcing your thinking to become really specific, and also to grasp which pieces of the literature support or contradict your argument. And so in this kind of iterative process, uh, which starts very, very broad, you end up in a very kind of targeted space that you can then write something like a proposal or like a qualifying exam on. And hopefully that thing becomes the major thrust of your thesis. But I think one of the most important aspects of it is that it has deadlines, right? And tasks that are sort of hierarchical, right? First, all you have to do, to do is deliver areas, right? Enthusiasm for different kind of pieces of biology and then we'll pick one and drill down to get really specific questions. And so knowing that there is a sort of hierarchy of what your thought process will look like and that the people in the lab and I will help you with that, I think relieves some of the anxiety of just thinking that like somehow magically you're supposed to sit in, the, in a room alone 
read a bunch of papers and come up with this like insightful project. I've never been able to come up with project ideas like that. Nothing is ever done in isolation and I certainly didn't just go off and sit in the library by myself and come up with a like fully formed thesis project. As like with anything in science and in life, things are always improved by talking to other people and refining your ideas. And so, you know, I would read a bit and think a bit and come up with a few questions that I found interesting and I would go and talk to Angela about them and she would encourage me on some of them and we'd scrap others because they were unfeasible. I'd talk to my lab mates, I'd talk to other people in the department um, and that enabled me to come up with a project that I was really interested in. It was a question that I wanted to answer but which was also kind of vetted by people who had more experience in the field.